Hey, what is up and warm welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a really exciting one. It's one that I've been looking forward to. Like many others, I skipped the first generation of Apple's M1 chip and I've been waiting for the next generation. Now, we all thought it was gonna be called the M1X. Apple had other ideas and that's totally all good. But today we're gonna to be doing an unboxing and first impressions of the 16 inch MacBook Pro and that is in the M1 Pro configuration. It's here and I'm so excited to get into the unboxing with you. It's been a mission and a half to get my hands on one of these. Luckily, I managed to snag one. Like I said, I went for the 16 inch model, which was a tough decision. Um, in the end, I'm not entirely sure if I made the right decision because it is big, it is heavy, but we're gonna get into all of that. Let's get into the unboxing. Yeah. I'm not gonna go crazy, it is just plastic at the end of the day. Let's get this thing open. Like a kid in Christmas. All right, first look at the MacBook Pro M1 Pro. Ah, <sighs> it's big. That's the first thing that I'm seeing is it is huge. Uh, let's have a look here. There's a bit of an indent there uh, with where the Apple logo is. Not entirely sure what that's for, uh, but let's turn this bad boy all over around. Etched in there, the words MacBook Pro. It looks awesome. It is underneath the unit, so you're not going to see it all the time, but that is really pretty cool and looks really premium. Like I said, I can feel that weight. It is heavy. I think it weighs in at 2.1 kilograms, um, which is a lot more reminiscent of the older version Max. I mean, I had one, I think it was a 2012 model um, that was probably a similar size to this, a lot more chunky uh, than the ones of recent. But uh, obviously with all of that extra weight and I get, well, I guess with the extra size profile and with that thickness, you get a whole lot more performance uh, in this second generation Apple chip, but we'll get all the way into that. Let's just quickly look at what else is in the box. So you've got the MagSafe adapter. You've obviously heard about this. Uh, Apple has returned back to the old days of the MagSafe charging unit. Uh, this is a little bit different though, because it's not soldered on to the charging brick. Uh, it does have a USB-C cable on the end of it. So you can, I suppose, plug it into a different charging brick if anything ever goes wrong with your unit. Then next up you get, like I said, the charging brick. Uh, this is a 140 watt charging brick. It uses some new technology uh, to be able to, I guess, get it into such a small size and profile. And uh, this is gonna let you fast charge on the MacBook Pro 16 inch. You can also charge using a Thunderbolt port, but if you're gonna fast charge using MagSafe with this brick, um, you know, you'll be able to get your battery life. I think it's to 50% in 30 minutes or something like that. We'll have to look into the specifics, uh, but at least you have this charging brick, which you can now also use because it's got the USB-C uh, ports as well. You can use that for any other device as well. And uh, of course, what else? You've got a few pieces of paper. Uh, people have been going crazy about the stickers. Uh, where are these stickers? We've got a few little bits and pieces to get started. Uh, what else is in here? There they are. There's the stickers that everyone has been getting very excited about. Only pro models uh, get black stickers. I've never had black stickers before myself. I never use the stickers. They always just get thrown away. Uh, but if you are super into stickers and you think you'd be keen for these, uh, I would be willing to snail mail these to one of you. If you are keen, just drop a comment down below and we'll get in touch. I'll send these over. I don't have many uses for these stickers. So let's then dig right into first impressions of the Mac. Like I said, it's bigger and heavier. I went for the space gray option and I went for the M1 Pro, not the M1 Max, because 
In my opinion, so far, based on what I've seen, based on reviews and everything, the research that I did on Apple's website, it seems like the M1 Max is gonna be overkill for the bulk of people who are actually buying them. That might be a little bit contentious, but I do truly believe that uh, the Max is a absolute insane powerhouse with you know even going up to 64 gigs of Apple's unified memory. Who needs that? Who needs all of those extra GPU cores and everything else you get with the M1 Max? I personally think it's overkill, so I didn't want to waste the extra money because I do think it would have been wasted. Sure, it would have given me some headroom over the next couple of years, but I don't think I'll ever grow into that headroom. If you are going to be editing sort of just 4K videos, uh, doing pretty standard kind of media creation, the Pro, I truly believe, even in the base models, based on what I've seen, is going to be more than sufficient for you. Just think about the M1, just think about everything that that did and you know how that blew the previous generations out of the water. This is even more powerful than that. So I think you're gonna be all good with just the M1 Pro. And for myself, that's what I decided. M1 Pro, nothing more, nothing less. All right, first time opening this unit. Like always, you're able to open it with, ooh, straight away. No messing around. We turn on as soon as you open it for the first time. Like I was just about to say, as always, you can open it with one hand, uh, obviously because it is you know, heavy at the bottom and uh, the kind of hinge that Apple has is always easy enough to open just with one hand. You've got this piece of paper on the front, that's great. Any kind of eco measures rather than having plastic, I'll give my thumbs up to. And wow, the first thing is the screen. The one of the reasons I went for the 16 inch is because of the screen. I mean, the screen is one of the selling points of this year's model. So to kind of scrounge and get the 14 inch, I feel like if you're gonna have this ProMotion, which is the 120 Hertz display in XDR with a full P3 color gamut, crazy brightness. Uh, it's that mini LED panel at the back as well. For me, I feel like if you're gonna get the screen, you wanna get the screen ultimately. I have an iPad which is an 11 inch model. Uh, I didn't see much of a point in getting a laptop that was 14 inch. So for me, if I'm gonna be on this thing, I'm gonna to want to use the screen for color grading, for video editing, and you know, use that extra real estate because ultimately you're getting more pixels with it. It's not just a scaled up version of kind of you know, the same resolution that you get on the 14 inch. There are more pixels here and you do actually get to use that extra real estate. The next thing that is glaringly obvious is the notch and everyone's been going crazy about this notch. To be honest, for me, the fact that we have these reduced bezels around the outside of the monitor, I can tolerate that notch. Ultimately, the camera needs to go somewhere. We don't, I don't like the kind of angle of, uh, I think it's Huawei who put the camera down in the key uh, and you have this camera glancing up your nose I'd much prefer having it in the notch. We can get used to it. We got used to it on the iPhones. It's now just a normal thing. To use English as the main language, press the return key. Thanks, thanks Siri. Uh, obviously the MacBook wants me to get started. So let me not hesitate any further. I'm gonna skip through this initial setup. Okay, so I'm all done with those initial screens, the initial setup screens. I've set up Touch ID and Apple Pay, all of that kind of stuff. As you know, this laptop, this MacBook Pro has Touch ID and they got rid of that touch bar at the top and instead you've got that full size function row of keys which is you know, reminiscent of the past. Ultimately, they got rid of that to give you the touch bar. People were really concerned about that escape button when that touch bar came. But anyway, here we are, we've got it back now. Uh, and just with the keyboard, you've got this background that is now black. So instead of having that contrasting difference between the keys and the background, uh, which used to be space gray, that is now inside this kind of little well with this black background. And I think it looks great, to be honest. I, I have no complaints with that. Like I said, in terms of the screen, it looks fantastic. Now that I've gone through all of that uh, initial setup and I've got the screen up in front of me, it really looks fantastic. I should probably crank this brightness up. My gosh, this thing goes so bright. Uh, I'm never gonna use it at this kind of brightness. I'll probably use it at about 70 or 80%. That looks pretty good to me. And obviously I've gone for dark mode. Why wouldn't you? Ultimately with dark mode, uh, with this notch, they actually spoke about dark mode in the notch. 
uh, during the release. And it looks great in dark mode, which our pro users love. But anyway, dark mode is what it is. First thing I wanna do is actually dig into some typing just to feel what this keyboard feels like. Uh, Apple said it feels like mechanical keys. I've heard from a few people that that's not the case. Let's give it a try. First impressions, it feels really good to be honest. I came from that MacBook, the 2018 model, which I'll show you in a little bit, that had basically the, the key crisis where Apple actually had to have a replacement program. Um, you know, it was th that whole butterfly versus scissor keyboard uh, situation. So I'm coming from that keyboard to this and it feels amazing. The sound is really good. Uh, it has not actually that much travel, um, which I think is a little bit surprising given it's thick and I suppose they could have pushed that keyboard maybe a little bit further down. But that's okay, I, I'm, I don't need a crazy amount of travel. And uh, yeah, I mean, overall, I'm really happy with the keyboard, to be honest. Uh, I was worried about just the kind of ergonomics of it um, because of how wide this is, obviously coming from the 15 inch model, um, but it, it feels pretty natural. I'm pretty happy with the keyboard all in all. Obviously, you also get the gigantic touchpad, um, which is just so hard to beat. I haven't come across any other laptop manufacturer that has been able to deliver a touchpad that is as accurate, that feels as good, that is as clicky. Um, I mean, this thing is just perfect. And it, it does feel a little bit different to the previous version that I had. This just, again, feels closer to me like the older model uh, in you know my 2012 uh, kind of MacBook. Um, so yeah, it, it, just, it, it just has that natural uh, kind of soft click feel um, and ultimately is as responsive as you'd expect. Uh, from the new MacBook Pro. Let's have a look as well at the contents of the notch, the actual camera. Now that's been upgraded finally from a 720p camera that was horrific to 1080p camera. So let me check it out for the first time. Uh, how am I even gonna see it? Let's have a look if they have got photo booth. They do have photo booth, that still is around. I've not checked this application in a while. Whoa, that is actually pretty clear. I didn't think it was gonna be this good. I've seen a few reviewers and I've been kind of underwhelmed at the results, uh, but seeing it now in person, I'm actually really quite impressed by this camera. I think it's gonna make a massive difference for just your video calls. Ultimately, you know, you're never gonna record a video on here, but just for video calls, at least you kind of look a little bit better. Um, obviously they have to, you know, make with what they can in terms of the space. Uh, you don't want that notch becoming any more big. But uh, yeah, I think they've done well here and it's a welcomed upgrade for the MacBook Pro. So I'm gonna close the lid now and let's talk about what else is new on this model. Apple brought back the ports. Uh, you would have seen so many people being very happy about that. On the right hand side, you've got an SD card slot um, with a Thunderbolt 4 port and an HDMI 2.0 port, not 2.1 port. So you are gonna be limited to 4K 60, but that's kind of what this laptop is for. It's not really, I wouldn't say, this is not where you're gonna plug your primary display in. Um, this is really where you're on the go, you need to hook something up to the TV or want to show a client or share something with someone, that's what this HDMI port is for. It's about not having to carry around dongles all the time. No one likes that dongle life. Uh, on the left side, you've got that MagSafe port and you've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports as well on this side. And again, the headphone jack is still here, but they've now improved the preamp that powers this bad little boy. So if you are on the couch, editing some video, editing some music, uh, or if you're out on the road, you know, on a plane, whatever the case is, you get good quality audio without having to carry around extra kind of dongle preamps or anything like that. Uh, you, you have that high quality. Like I said, it is thicker than before. And I think the best way to illustrate this is, let me actually pull through my 2018 MacBook Pro. Give me a sec. All right, so I've got the 2018 MacBook Pro, which is what I'm coming from. And ultimately, like I said, it is a kind of, I suppose it's an inch bigger. It's a 16 inch versus 15 inch. Um, but let's have a look at the practical differences in size. So if I put my old one on top of uh, this new one, you'll actually see that it's, it's not an inch bigger. So obviously because of those smaller bezels, ultimately they've been able to save space on the overall size profile. And I'm actually, 
I'm actually pleasantly surprised by this, actually doing this kind of one-on-one -on -one comparison now that I have it in front of me. I was really worried that the 16 inch was gonna to be too big for me. But uh, to be honest, this is not actually a whole lot bigger at all. Personally, I think it would be a mistake to drop down from the 15 inch to 14 inch, especially if you are used to that size and uh, screen real estate. This is not much of a bump up from the 15. I'm pleasantly surprised just in terms of overall uh, size profile of the body. In terms of thickness, if I put these two next to each other, you'll notice if you have a look here, and I guess that's just by coincidence, that that extra height difference is, is basically equal to that new screen. So ultimately it is a bit of a bigger profile, but if you do remember with these older models, um, there's a bit of a kind of curvature. So it feels thinner when you're holding it on the edges, but if you actually were to measure from the thickest point on this old model, um, you know, to the top, the difference is actually maybe not as big as you would have thought. It is going to be heavier ultimately, but you're getting that extra performance. And uh, for anyone who has ever experienced any lags on an old machine, I think those days are completely gone. Now with the second generation of Apple chips, I honestly think we can carry these things along with us and get an insane amount of stuff done without any of those bottlenecks, without proxies, without scaling down your timeline. You'll be able to just gratuitously do whatever the heck you want. And obviously with, with codecs, that is where this thing is gonna shine because it's got those encoders and decoders for certain codecs. So key here for you videographers is to look at the codec that your camera uses and see whether the encoders and decoders that are built into the chip of these new machines can kind of handle those codecs uh, natively without you having to kind of recode them into more digestible formats. And I think that is where we're gonna see the biggest differences on these machines. So what I'm gonna do now is open up the screen so you can actually see how much practical real estate we gain from going from the 15 inch to the 16 inch. And uh, straight off the bat, you can see with those bezels a whole lot smaller and with the notch, I mean, notch has to be given credit for this, you really, really do get a whole lot more screen real estate uh, on the 16 inch model. So if you, if that was a concern of yours, if you're coming from a 15 inch on an older 2018 or 2019 model, I genuinely think you'll be happy going to the 16 inch. So next up, I'm gonna be editing this whole video on this new machine. Let's check in with future Chad to see what his editing experience has been like. Okay, so I've just finished editing this entire video on the new MacBook Pro and have a couple of initial observations for you. Now, I know this video is already quite long and I won't keep you much longer, but these are my first experiences when editing on this Mac. Firstly, in terms of the file formats, I shoot on my Fujifilm X-T4 in the native file format of HEVC or H.265. Now, this footage is typically very hard to work with and I would normally have to encode that into another more digestible format before actually being able to start editing with it or even using proxy files. In this case, I was able to import the footage straight away using the built-in SD card slot and honestly was able to just start editing with it straight away in that native file format, which is a pretty insane game changer in terms of workflow for me. I was able to color grade, speed ramp, all of those good things and experienced no lags in a full scale timeline with 100% resolution. It's really, really impressive. In terms of battery life, I spent most of my time editing this video, sat on the couch for hours on end, and I remember just being staggered at the amount of battery life still left after a solid, chunky editing session. It really is quite impressive. Then there's the heat profile. I didn't notice this Mac get extremely hot at any point in time while I was busy editing, and didn't even notice whether the fans turned on or not at all. That said, I did have headphones on most of the time, plugged in to the high fidelity audio output. The screen was a breeze to edit and color grade to, and all of that extra real estate was very welcomed. The notch didn't bug me at all. If anything noteworthy came to mind during this whole experience, it would have to be the fact that I now feel a sense of freedom when editing and when using this machine. Ultimately, all of the barriers and hurdles you normally have to go through when trying to edit that become kind of a mental drain or creativity drain, those are all gone now. So that's fantastic. And ultimately, that wraps up my first impressions editing 
on the MacBook Pro. Thanks, future Chad. In closing, I'm really, really pleased with this device. And I'm not just saying that because I'm an Apple fanboy or because I'm really excited with my purchase and I need to kind of justify that to you. I really do think that this device is gonna keep me happy for a long period of time. And I'm really excited for what I'm gonna create on this device. Ultimately having that color accuracy with you on the go, having that processing power to try new things and I guess not having to wait for things to render or kind of load in the background. This is ultimately everything I could have hoped for. And like I said, I'm really just pleased and excited. In terms of whether you should get the M1 Pro or the M1 Max, I genuinely think that the M1 Pro is gonna be sufficient for most people. Unless you shoot 8K video in complex projects or you work for a kind of cinema house or you're an animator and do mad stuff and you're coming from a massive Mac tower that cost you $30,000, I really think we need to have this important conversation and be honest with ourselves and you know not overstate our needs because that extra money could be much better spent elsewhere and ultimately you're just wasting money if you don't actually need those extra performance stats. In terms of size, if you're constantly on the go or you're coming from the 13 inch MacBook Pro or MacBook Air and you suddenly now need the Pro processor, then I think the 14 inch will be just fine for you. You also have to think about your battery life. Ultimately, you get a 100 watt battery in the 16 inch with a 70 watt battery in the 14 inch. And uh, obviously that bigger screen, if you're gonna be based mostly at your studio or at your house and occasionally traveling to coffee shops or clients or you know actually traveling on planes, then I would say go for the bigger screen. The screen, is magnificent and it's a key selling point for this Mac. That extra color accuracy, that extra brightness, that extra contrast. I would go for the bigger screen and the bigger profile if you are not always mobile. So yeah, that's my first impressions of the M1 Pro MacBook Pro. That's a bit of a mouthful. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit a like down below and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more from me in the future. Hit that notification bell if you wanna get notified when I post a new video and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for checking in. We'll see you in the next one.